Nothing's happening. There we go. Hello, everyone. We are live. I am back with Alistair. We are talking Megatron 3000 today. Hi, Alistair. This is the Megatron team. Woo! What? What? Very excited. Very excited. This is going to be brilliant. Um, Alistair has sent us some lists that we're going to go over today, and we're going to talk about the pack and what's happening, and uh, there'll be a shout out for the sponsors at the end. It's going to be brilliant. But before we do any of that, I'm going to have to share my screen for just a sec. Here we go. Just uh, here we go. I have prepped this a little better. I can see that. Right. Here we go. So. Shout out and sort of a hype and uh, the hype is already starting. Look at that picture. That is the first prize winnings for whoever wins Megatron 3000. Yes. So Megatron 3000 is back for another year in Scotland. And um, I know we're going to talk about the pack soon, but the and the sponsors at the end, the price support is coming in. Uh, that picture is the trophy produced yep. by Demonscape, which are a local Scottish company run by Terry Millard. He's made all my trophies again this year. The gold nipple trophy, he will recognise from Warlord Games himself. And because Megatron 3000 is, is a big enough event, we've got 46 paid and confirmed players. Uh, wow. We're classified, I know, mate. We're classified as a tier three event. So we got gold order dice for the winner. Wow. Yes. Amazing! Wow, so cool. I I am extremely jealous of all. They are they are this. so rare. They're so rare. Yep. Um, yes. Oh, this is shaping really shaping up, isn't it? Yeah, it's ridiculous. I'm so happy. So, talk us through the pack. What's going on with the pack? What are so, you doing? So the player pack, it's um was designed by myself the concept, and it's been picked up around the world by a few different term organizers, but. The main premise behind it is that it's 1,250 points, 18 order dice cap. It only uses theatre selectors from the campaign books, not from the army books. Mm. And once a player buys their ticket, they have to confirm what theatre selector they're going to use. And once that theatre selector has been picked, it is then off the market. So there is only going to be ever one of every theatre selector being played so every army should be unique in that aspect uh, and it means that players can do a lot of theming for their army but it also leaves the door open for competitive players it also leaves That's... the door open for historical players because and it also opens up all the different special rules for each selector many of them have really interesting special rules exactly right? and it also opens the door to special characters because yes. a great number of the selectors allow special characters to be taken. Um, so it, it introduces armies that are, I'm not going to say rare, but combinations that are you, you wouldn't see a, a fully competitive event. Yep. Um, it's, it's a huge amount of admin work from myself, yep. keeping, keeping track yeah, of it all. But 40, it's, 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 43 it's, different uh, theatre selectors. You're going to have to, every time 46. someone pays a ticket, be really quick, and, and then yep. this is blocked. Well, yep. when, when the tickets went on sale back in October 2022, I sold 20 tickets uh, in the first 24 hours. Yep. Uh, so, and then it was up to 30 by three days. So it was it was fast and furious um, as people, as the early people wanted to get on board because they knew they had an idea, they had a, they had a vision of what their mm. army was going to be. Um, and that's and that's also a good ploy when I was designing the pack in the first place was to drive early ticket sales so that so that I knew the event was going to be a success. Um, and this year, as I said, it's a sellout, an absolute sellout at 46 players. There's no more capacity in the venue. Um, but I also have had 16 players drop out and I've still got 46 players coming. So it's just phenomenal. Oh, wow. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> wow. Brilliant. That is amazing. Um, so the, what's you've run this event or types of this event before, right? The the last yes. one was the Minitron that you ran, wasn't it? Um, uh, Minitron, Minitron was just a little bit of a taster session for. Yeah. There was quite a few new players that mm. were interested and, and had signed up for Megatron, and I think they needed to get uh, a tournament experience yeah. just to find out what it was. So I used the same venue, and I think I had sort of six out of the sixteen players there were, were brand new. Just mm. so they could get a feel for what it's like to play in a 
a tournament environment and they loved it but all coming brilliant so the feedback's been really good i guess feedback's been excellent i think all my the bulk of the players that were there last year have returned yeah and say uh, they've obviously spoken to their friends uh, and they've spoken to their friends and we've got 46 players coming so so i and, think last and, year we and do i remember this right that if you've been to a previous megatron event you can't bring the same theater selector again that's right this, that was only for only for this year so okay. i asked all those I asked all those players that were there at the very first megatron that if they were planning on coming uh, this year that mm. they pick a different nation so if you use british you don't get to use british this time and i i think i was a bit worried that people might have found like the magic recipe for yeah. success yeah. and i just wanted to, to break them out of that but um when i look back i don't think there is a magic recipe for success in this format <laughs> but all all the players that have returned for this year they have changed their nations and again though it was a drive because i was going to give the players a lot more notice like tickets went on sale 10 months before the event so i wanted to give players the time to choose and build and paint a brand new army and not just use something that's already on their shelf um, and I, I think I think that's happened for the majority of them. Um, but it won't be it won't be a stipulation for future events. If you you can yep. play the same nation if you want, I just just for that first year. Um, were there any major takeaways that you're expecting, sort of, from previous Megatrons? I know we've the two of us have talked about the, like top theater selectors, and and yep. much of that was based on your experience of Megatron. Mm -hmm. um, uh, are you expecting to see like uh, trends going forward in that some theatre selectors do better than others, or are we expecting this to be a glorious uh, mix of everything that Bold Action has to offer? This, having looked at the theatre selectors that have been taken, there have been some of the really good ones that we've commented on mm. in the campaign books haven't been picked up. Um, and I have been looking at theatre selectors that I've never really delved into before. So players are, they're exploring the books and they've, they've dug up some new stuff um, yep. that, has, that has escaped us. And I think they've, they've done really, really well. Uh, so I, I don't know is the answer. And that is amazing. <laughs> That is amazing. Amazing. Yeah. That that is security. That that of someone just coming up with something that's brilliant and that you hadn't seen. That's oh, that's that's the best thing. Yeah. And with a field of forty six players, each field in a unique list, it's just oh. ridiculous. And and the five lists that we've got to look at today, there are a couple of them that have got some really unique concepts. Mm. And just just to tease the audience. I have got a bonus selector I want to talk about, um, which won't be on your your PowerPoint presentation if we get time to record it. So we'll we'll do that. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> we're 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 trying to work it because every time me and Alice talk, we we'll, we'll, we are way above the hour mark. Um, so we're trying to do this in an hour ish. <laughs> right. So that was the previous Megatrons. So what are we expecting today uh, for this one? Um, selectors will be what you said it will be quite a huge variety you're expecting to see a huge variety of units as well i guess um yep. so it won't be just the, the the usual um two stewards per army um are we expecting to see, to see something that that we haven't seen before like units that we don't normally see at tournaments yes, <laughs> yes that was will. yeah Yep. What about nations? Um... Nations is a tricky one because we're only using the campaign books yep. uh, and not the army books. The minor nations don't really get represented. And to my knowledge, there is only going to be one minor nation army, and that is one French army Okay. so far. Um, everything else is uh, the, the five major powers, Germany, mm. United States, Soviet Union, Great Britain, uh, and Italy. Yeah. Um, so that's that is a, a it's a slight failing mm. of the Megatron format, and it's one that I am going to remedy for next year for its third year running in Scotland, and that I am going to allow the um, armies of Italy 
and the Axis and France and the Allies. Yep. So, so the, I will allow those some to. minor nations will be able to attend. If if they wish to. And and that is I suppose that is the only negative type feedback mm. that I've received. But again mm. though, thinking about that, in between then and now, we should have well, we will have at least one new campaign book, which will be the Italy Tough Cut. Mm. Um, but that just brings more to the major powers. Um, but I believe there's also Case Blue, mm. which is the Eastern Front. So that may include the Hungary, Romania, yep. uh, Finland, potentially, uh, depending on what path they go down. So it's it's all possible. It's all possible. For me personally, uh, at 12.50, I would expect to see uh, at least some... Um, medium tanks uh, being selected and I would expect that people were looking uh, very heavily at special characters because some of those special characters have really interesting synergies with other things that you can do. So so that would be what I was looking for in the army lists. Now I'm there really excited. Few, there are a few little notes though from the player pack which I dropped in mm. in that any British Commonwealth army cannot benefit from more than two free units in their army. So oh. you won't see the Free Observer and the 10-man Free Indian Squad. Mm. I, I have included for the Italians, they will always get their D3 defensive emplacements. So regardless if they are, you know, attack or defender, yeah. they'll always get them in every mission they want. I have gone back and given Germany the rules as written from their army book, Tiger Fear Rule. But I have only given it to the Tiger One and Tiger Two tanks. Okay. Um, so all sets of rules, slight modifications. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I believe. Oh, and the other silly thing is from the Stalingrad campaign book. Mm. Uh, nobody, nobody gets Panzerfausts from the Stalingrad ah. campaign book <laughs> because they weren't. I think I wrote somewhere it's like they were only on pre-order at that stage. Yeah. They weren't actually in the market. <laughs> um, but that's. That's simply because there are some quirks when you mm. write the army lists that yeah. in Stalingrad it says you can take a unit of Soviet assault engineers uh, on page whatever it is of the Soviet army book. Then you go to the Soviet army book and it says, oh, I can have body armor. Great. You can have flamethrower. Yes. Oh, and you can have two Panzerfausts. Yeah. That's that's not right for yeah. Stalingrad. Not for Stalingrad. Um, right. And that, I'm pretty sure that's it. So Brilliant. let's go. Let's go. Now we have a few lists to share and I'm going to jump out of this PowerPoint for just a sec because Alistair sent us some lists and um, <laughs> the first one that we're going to look at is a British Polish paratroop list. It is a 17 order dice, 1249 points. First lieutenant with two extra men, Ooh, veteran, oh, expensive and hard. Paratroopers. So I should, sorry, I should say this is Fergus McPherson. Yep. And this is from the campaign Market Garden, page 22. And look, yep. as we do always, I've got the book. book. Okay, Bo, crack on. Yep. Um, he's got uh, five man paratrooper units um, with anti tank grenades, a medic, free forward observer. And then larger units of paratroopers here with light machine guns, anti-tank grenades. Everything's got anti-tank grenades. <laughs> Medium machine gun team veteran, light mortar team veteran, peer team veteran, sniper team veteran, all the teams, flamer team veteran, tough as boots. So he gets the extra attack dice in close combat. Six pounder, jeep, 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 jeep. Wow. A um, lot of choices here I would not normally make. This yeah. is an interesting list, though. It's very, very hard. Almost everything in it is veteran. Yeah, and he's got the he's got a good dice count as well. Yeah, yeah. Even, even for having everything veteran, that seventeen know, order dice. That Still is, got seventeen order dice. Can yeah. you remind me, sorry, on the list, how many um, airborne reconnaissance jeeps does he have? Uh. He, he's got zero airborne reconnaissance, reconnaissance jeeps. He's got three regular jeeps, um, which are for his uh, flamer team, his peer team, and yep. for his uh, lieutenant, I guess. Yep. So when I read this list, I really liked the dice count. I mm. liked the high number of veterancy that he has. So all his infantry units and small yep. teams will be as 
you know, sustainable as as he can make them. Uh, there were a couple of tricks though that this selector could have provided him that he's overlooked, and you know, if he's overlooked them for tactical reasons or for reasons that he doesn't like to use them, that's down to the that's player. Fine, yeah. But one of them was that this list could have a zero to two forward observers. Mm. So what you're missing in the artillery section, you can make up with observers. Granted, you have to buy them, yep. but the option was there to buy them. But zero to two, that is not nothing. That's a lot of artillery bombardment coming down. Yep, yep. And we've we've seen from Johnny Ferg in the past, he's ran yep. a list that has three observers, yep. um, but he had to do a dual platoon to make it work. Whereas with this, you can make a triple observer list work with mm. a single theatre selector. Yeah. He had the option on zero to one resistance squads. Mm. So I thought having a big bucket of you know cheap bodies could be the way forward. But again, though you look at the list, he's gone very elite. So it's gone elite. Yeah. Yeah. So that's got its thing. And then having zero to two airborne recon jeeps, we know that they are they are amazing. really good. They're really good choices. So a um, really interesting uh, theatre selector that that uh, he he's chosen to go more historical with, actually. Yes, um, I think so. Yeah, but right. a really good list from Fergus, and I'm looking forward to um, to seeing it play on the day. Yeah. Then we have this one, which is the Italian Armour Brigade from Western Desert. Right. This is going to be a good talk because this is Andy Mackay. Who is ah. the winner of last year's Megatron 3000? So and a this previous is, Scottish champion as well. And previous Scottish champion, he's no slouch. So this is the 1942 Italian Armored Brigade from Western Desert. And page. can you remind us? Does it have any uh, interesting special rules? So page 109, it does. So this one has Iron Hulls, Iron Hearts. Yep. So blah 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 blah. Lots of talk. But the effective rule is an Italian medium or light tank with the Iron Hulls, Iron Hearts rule may re-roll any failed order test to advance or run as long as it would bring them closer to the enemy. So as long as you're going towards danger, you're good. That is exactly. really good. And that's really an aggressive army. So we're expecting him to, to fight this really aggressively as well. Yeah. And normally you wouldn't see Italians, but... But as soon as you move into theater selectors, this becomes much more interesting. He's got 15 order dice, 1246 points, just enough for a mule, I guess. <laughs> and uh, and he brings the M14s, which are DACA tanks, um, three MMGs, a light AT gun, armored commander, of course, with a radio network because he's got three of them. And he buys a, an artillery observer. <laughs> yep. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And then cheap and, and, and easy infantry here, regulars, uh, two skirmish units, one backline holder, very dedicated for their roles. Regular medium mortar with a spotter, sniper team, anti tank rifle team, auto blinders. I really like the auto blinders. Oh, they're great, thanks. Great they are really cars. great. Yeah. Big fans. And a uh, further M14 and some transports, pendle mounted MMGs and Fiat. Right. So yep. everything can actually go and move away from danger. I like it. And and all the the auto cannons and the light AT guns, the M14s can just blast up towards the enemy. Oh, it's a good list. So it's he's a good got, list. He's got the four. You know, M14 tanks, so four DACA tanks, yep. backed up by the auto blinder. Yeah. A uh, light on troops, as all armored platoons are, mm. um, and he's only got them zipped up effectively into two trucks. Yeah. Just with their, because they're two, was it two six man squads, five man squad? I can't really remember what they two were. Two six man uh, and and one five man. Yeah. Yeah, two six man. So that's one truck. The five then plus all these small teams go in the other truck. Yep. Um, so he's 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 going to be tight. Our dice count is okay. Um, and then a little, but, but, a little low, but but that's expected if you're running yeah. armored platoons. Exactly. Uh, so it's good. I mean, he's got to he's got to understand that uh, you know he's got objectives. 
to claim and contest. You know, part of the part of the player pack is uh, their secondary objectives as well. Mm. So, you know, he's got to make sure he covers that. But and he's a top quality player when you've got four DACA tanks. Yep. Um, and and you can most I mean he he could feed these tanks to an opponent one at a time or just yep. all four of them at once and then have them shoot that out while he takes the objectives. Precisely, it is um, a valid tactics. It yep. is. So I like I'm going to say it should do well, should. but then again, you know everybody knows what uh, theater selectors people have taken. Mm. So if you yep. know you you might come across four four tanks. Yep. you'll have enough anti-tank to them um, to take it out so right and then the third army list that we have here is the canadian airborns yeah so the canadian airborne this is max bohm he's a regular almost becoming a veteran of the scottish tournament uh, tournament scene so canadian airborne 1944 to 1945 page 155 of d-day british canadian mm-hmm. sectors and does it have any special interesting rules or is it just that it's Canadian? No, he's he's got a few a few in there. So um special selector rules, been there, done that. All infantry, headquarters, and artillery units in the list must be veterans. Okay. Uh, he's got the ability to upgrade everybody or anybody to tough fighter for plus one point their model. Nice. And there's just comrades in arms. The Canadian Airborne units work closely with their British counterparts. You may include one unit of either British Airborne Pathfinders mm. or British Airborne Royal Engineers from the D-Day Overlord book. So nice. you can take some allies. He's got 1241. He's missing nine points, which is a pity. Um, not sure if that is a missed opportunity or if he's bringing... Oh, no. No, I I asked. I put the question to him. Um, seemingly there was nothing. Nothing mm. could go anywhere else. So okay, seventeen order dice is good though. Oh really yeah, good. Oh yeah. Yeah, Canadian second lieutenant veteran with two men, lovely veterans, and then a five man submachine gun parachute uh, section. Two of those again, hard, stubborn. Whew. Canadian observer. With an extra man, veteran, yep. yep, and the free observer. So he got, he's got two observers. Yeah, Canada, Canada gets the free British observer. Yep, that is that's hard. Mm-hmm. The enemy is going to be pinned once he he connects to them. They're going to be pinned down, and then he's got Canadian parachute sections here. That these are the backline holders. Uh, he's got uh, six man sections with light machine guns. Two of those, and one without anything, with uh, just five men with rifles. Hate the SS, that's the Canadian special rule. Um, yeah. And he's got a medium mortar, veteran with a spotter, two of those. Oof. So yeah. not only is he doing double artillery strike, he's doing double mortars as well. Yep. Pier team, veteran, sniper team, uh, recon troops behind enemy lines, veteran. Oh, yeah, a 25 pounder, a recce carrier, mm-hmm. tetrarch, a jeep, and a truck. Really, really nice, hard list. There's a lot of fire going into the enemy before he actually connects with them with his yeah. um, with his veterans. Yeah. So, I can see you can see the strategy here from Max, he's looking for. Pinning the enemy down, yep. uh, trying to get those medium mortars to take out some units that are rendered ineffective by pins, and then picking, you know, a left flank, right flank sort of situation, then sending in the brain carrier, yeah, and transports in the tank just to sort of punch a hole uh, yep. in his opponent. Uh, I like I like the selector. I really like he's managed to keep the dice count dice count up as well. Yeah, that's that's so really important. And when you've got and, a lot and of difficult this. when you're paying veteran points for everything, right? Yep. 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 Truly. So, you know, I'd love love to have seen him spend that extra nine points somewhere. Yeah. Um, but that's that's down to the uh, down to the player. So mm. and, and looking at the selector, I don't think he's left anything 
off the table nope. in terms of his options. Uh, nope. You know, nope, maybe really good. maybe having that um, British Airborne Engineer section. Yeah, could have been, uh, but but th that would have but, pushed his dice cows count a little down. Yeah, because the the points would have gotten yeah. eaten up. So Max has got a plan. Max is an experienced player now. Um, what I really think the guy needs is is a little bit of luck mm. to um, to come to him because I've I've played him a few times and one of the games it was straight up he was just straight up unlucky not yeah. to get any sort of result from the game. Yeah. So, uh, but if he has he's... a little luck and his his two artillery bombardments come down and he's zero in with his mortars and his artillery at the same time, yep. uh, this can really hurt someone. Yes, this, this, this is can a make good it happen. Test. And those uh, veteran units of infantry, mm. if you're trying to shoot them out with, uh, you know, say a M1440 Italian DAC tank, and they go yeah. down in cover, yep. yeah, no, you can shoot yeah. all day at them, and you're yeah. you won't really make it happen. So yeah, yeah. I hope I hope Max does well. He's a he's a player that deserves deserves good result. Right. Next list we have is the U.S. Cavalry Reconnaissance Armored Platoon. I it love this list. Dice. So this is a player called Ryan Harrison. And Ryan has got, as you said, the U.S. Armor, US Army Cavalry Reconnaissance Troops, 1933 to 1944, from D-Day U.S. sectors. By the mm. books, people. And now this is... Where is it? You should start reading it. <laughs> <laughs> start reading it and it will come to you. Okay, okay. go. Yeah, he's, he's buying uh, Greyhounds. So one, two, three Greyhounds. A first lieutenant. So he's going to do some snap toing. And Infantry squads with BARs, good size on those infantry squads. Medium mortar, medium mortar, medium, three medium mortars in XP. <laughs> a bazooka team, a Stuart light tank, not the darker version, just a Stuart. And Jeeps, one, two, three Jeeps with pintle mounted MMGs. Oh my. And, and trucks for everything. Yeah. Um, it's brilliant, isn't it? He's going to snap two stuff, and he's yep. got three of everything. So one of the special rules. So this this is an armor platoon. Yeah. Um, but it's a it's a recon platoon. So he's only ever got the choice of the M8 Greyhound, mm. um, as his sort of armored vehicle option. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a Stuart in there, isn't there? Yeah. Was there an M? There's M5 a, 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 a an M5 Stuart. Yep. So he's. He could have zero to two Greyhounds or an M5A1 Stuart. Mm. But one of the special rules is uh, for every M8 Greyhound in the reinforced platoon, the player may also take a Jeep, which must be upgraded to take a machine gun and lose its transport ability. This does not count towards the platoon's allowance. So so every Greyhound allows a, a, a Daka Jeep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I think this is just crazy. So I have... I, and Look M8 at the Greyhound. amount of oh yeah. What was the dice count again, please? It was high. It, it's eighteen order dice, yeah. so it's very high. It's on the on the money. Yeah. Oh, this is fun. He's got Recky on on all his his greyhounds. His lieutenant can do snap twos, um, mm -hmm. and and he can basically go behind any of these uh, three unit uh, sections, and and snap to all of them at once, more yeah. or less. Medium mortars, all of them. Oh. Yep, and experienced medium mortars, so yeah. he's got the got the skills for doing it. <laughs> all 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 units you like plus units you've never seen. This is this will absolutely blow people's mind. Yeah. Experienced players, you know, for, that are regular tournament goers will come up against this and will just be baffled. Um, yeah. And I I really hope Ryan enjoys playing it because it is going to play really, really well. Um, it's going to be really fun to play, isn't yeah. it? But again, you you look at the... So he's got the Dodge trucks for mm. the infantry squads and stuff, so they're yeah. all zipped up. Yeah. So no, it's, it's going to be good. It's really going to be good. 
Right, last army that we're going to look at <coughs> is the Warsaw Uprising. Yeah, so this is from a player called Adam McLean, and he has gone for the German Warsaw Uprising Theatre Selector mm. from Road to Berlin. Page 51. And there are no special... Um, there's no special rules that anything impact okay. him, so he's got 12 50 14 order dice so he's low on order dice count i am expecting to see a lot of equipment or veteran units then second lieutenant with an extra man regular felchin armor nice they've got that chained uh dog rules uh so maybe he could bring strap up uh, and submachine guns and panzerfaust and his mounted then on motorcycles. <laughs> oh, and he's got two units of these affection Um <laughs> I I don't know that the motorcycles are worth it, but it is fun. It's really fun. And one of the unit is more of a backline holder with the light machine gun, but it's still got two Panzerfausts. The other is more of a push unit with submachine guns. Very expensive units, though, but <laughs> that's going to be fun to play. Storm Pioneers. He's got flamethrowers, submachine guns, uh, the usual stuff. Hair Grenadier Veterans, six assault rifle dudes. Hair Grenadiers, rifles, assault rifles, Panzerfausts. Oh, everything is, is different and changed up, isn't it? Yep. And then we've got the last Hair Grenadier with rifles, light machine gun, Panzerfaust. All the units are different. Each one is unlike the other. There's no redundancy at all. Medium machine gun team, regular. A medium uh, inex mortar. A sniper team, regular. Medium artillery team. Um, the SDK have said 222. That's brilliant. And a Hetzer. Ooh, that's a 9 plus with a heavy anti tank gun. Yeah. Wow. That is going to murder some stuff. And yep. a uh, 250 slash one half track. Wow. Yeah. That this is, there's a lot of, of just showing off your whole collection of Germans here. Yeah. So this I, is brilliant. I liked it from the variety. Yeah. That, that's gone into it. Um, the Hetzer, I thought, I think the Hetzer is a good choice here today. It is. Um, just having a really big gun yep. put onto a effectively it's a, quite a small chassis. Mm. Um, but he needs to to place it right and play it right because because it can be vulnerable. But it is a nine plus tank yep. um, with a heavy anti tank gun. Uh, that uh, that Italian platoon uh, armored platoon. If that comes up against the headset, it's going to um, it's going to lose a tank per turn. Yeah, I think so. Um, one of, what did I think he left? Actually, I don't think he left anything on the table for me. If he's gone for a good sort of themed look for yeah. it. Yeah. I was just happy to see it. Happy to see a variety of infantry squads. Order dice is a little bit short. Um, but but he spends he the points. He spends every single point on something interesting. And, and every unit has an interesting little story yeah. it's all thematic and interesting and and if used right could be useful uh I, there's a lot of sub optimal choices uh the light machine gun and the medium machine gun may not be uh optimal choices but they're very very thematic and and you can use them uh in in good roles here yeah. what i will say though is that in the megatron 3000 format mm. you do you do see these choices come in mm. uh, even myself i gave somebody a practice game and i took a germany last levy book a yep. uh, last levy theater selector sorry extended last levy theater selector uh, and i had 14 order dice i had a tiger one i also had a medium machine gun team in there just because it was applicable um, yep. for the list so i think adam will enjoy his day he might not frighten the top end Unless but, his Hetzer crew are on fire. Yeah. 
but not if literally. they are, if they're on that, fire, that, they're well, but if they're shooting well, then. I think he's going to put the frighteners up people. But again, though, he's got combinations of units and abilities that, that mm. normal sort of tournament players won't have encountered. Yeah. Uh, you know, especially with having, you know, two big units on more bikes, there's a lot of speed. Yes, there's there. a lot of speed um, in that, yeah. yeah. So, no, that's, that's pretty exciting. Right. As Do we... we have two things left on the um, menu for today, and one okay. of them is you had found a new selector that you didn't know about because of this Megatron thing. Yes. Could you just tell us what it is that you've been working on Okay, here? so a player called Gordon Innes has taken from the campaign Stalingrad book on page, where are you? 150. Hmm? It's the 57th Panzer Corps Armour Platoon, December 1942. And it's an armour platoon. I won't bother going through the exact options, but effectively the command vehicle, you can get the DACA Panzer III mm. in two vehicles, so you can get the DACA Panzer III. Then it's the normal, you know, 1st, 2nd Lieutenant, etc. Uh, 0-4 Infantry Squads, Panzer Grenadier, here Pioneer Squads, and Crad Schutzen Squads, basically you can get Pioneers. Yeah. Uh, two MMG teams, one mortar, one flamer, one sniper, one anti tank rifle, uh, one artillery piece, the naval warfare's there, the, and the flag bearing's there. Uh, armored car, the motorbike and sidecar's there. Uh, then it's zero to two, more tanks, the Panzer III's still there, plus all the other nonsense. All the different toes are there heavy field car, kit and crowd, all the good stuff you want there. The special rule, the special rule. Mechanized, this platoon must include at least enough transports, vehicles and or toes, either soft, skinned or armoured, to transport all models in half the total number of infantry and artillery units. What? In half? Half the total number of infantry and artillery units, not men, not units, not units. What? Units. That is amazing. You're getting your tank platoon for half the cost. Less, because it's units. Because so it's units, units you can just buy for your teams. And Oh, man. Yeah. Oh. So if you take four Pioneer squads and then, uh, you know, a light mortar, a flamethrower, yeah. a sniper, an anti-tank rifle, all you need is one heavy field car or one light truck yeah. to take the four teams Blue, blew my mind. That is insane. That's so good. Blew wow, my mind. I want to so build Germans now. His, um, his list hasn't come in yet. Um, it does. Uh, there will be some deficiencies because there's no Panzerfausts in Stalingrad. Okay. Um, but and again, he will, he, he will bring the the Dagger Panzers. They all have light AT guns. That that should yep. be enough for most competition play, but. He might yep. want to look at maybe getting one medium AT gun in somewhere. Yeah, and he can he can work on that. But that half the number of units, not men. Crazy days. Ooh, that is good. Yep. For all the guys making Germany great again, look into theater lists. Keep on digging. Keep on digging. It's there, people. It's there. Right. Here at the end, we're going to talk about all the sponsors because that is an amazing list. Look at this. Yes, this is. So wow. I, what I do with our sponsors for the Micron 3000 is that I contact them all. I contact them all individually yep. and talk to them about what the event is, what they get out of it. I also um, do an after action report. So I tell them where they've been spoken about, where they can find their sponsorships names um you know the different media outlets that it's all happened uh, and also with pictures of the event and their product mm. but and they have... by the way they will also be featured here on this channel link in the description um and and we will talk about them again once we do an after action report uh, yeah, after promised action. to come oh, the back on, on the channel brilliant cool. so but to talk about them warlord games themselves Yep. The manufacturer of the game, they provided us a fantastic um, support pack with the Golden Order dice, which is highly, highly sought after. Rubicon models, um, we know that they produce fantastic plastic kits. They have given me three tanks to hand out to the fans. 
foot sore miniatures. They provided a little sample miniature for everybody on the day. They also do a good range of uh, Modern War II that you can see. Osprey Books, publishers of all the campaign books. So they sent me some campaign books. Uh, Any Scale Miniatures, they're a 3D printing company based in Scotland. And they do some fantastic stuff, especially um, especially in the way of like ruined and destroyed vehicles. I'm told they're quite popular. KO Design or Coed Design, um, coming out of Sweden, they um, produce dice bags. And they've given me dice bags for the Megatron 3000. And on the Sunday, I'm running a Blood Bowl event called the Megatron Mega Bowl. Uh, the two events are linked together. Um, that might be a discussion for another another day. Mm. Game Mat EU. So we've got a double sided six foot by four foot neoprene gaming mat to give out to um, one of the, the players that contribute scenery to the event. Micro Art Studio. I cannot stress how amazing their stuff is. Yeah, I so have good. picked up some of the brand new yeah. uh, Normandy buildings for myself. They've also sent a bunch of them uh, to give out as prizes, but these are um, laser cut MDF, but they've got the color printed on them, and it is just the detail and the attention is just fantastic. So, Minecraft Studio out of Poland. Exit 23 Games, they're a retailer. And um, they're going to be providing some uh, vouchers for their, their web store. Thai Waffen Kammer out of Canada. We know that he produces just some of the best miniatures out there. He's sent, uh, I think it's an elephant he's sending. So good luck to the player that wins that one. That'll be a good tank to put on the, on the table. Yep. Uh, Demonscape, who I've mentioned before, who have produced our trophies. They also produce gaming aids such as pin counters, movement trays, and um, they're based in Scotland. And um, their their owner operator is called Perry Millard. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alba Studios, again based in Scotland and Aberdeen, they're a commission painting service and three D printing service. I can highly recommend them. Also, Mardav three D printing. They are producing a fantastic prize package for us in terms of vouchers and 3D printed vehicles. I'll also drop in now, Bo, and hopefully I'm not ruining a future surprise, that myself and Bo have got a planned YouTube video for doing some painting and hobby style yep. uh, content. I will be using one of Mardab's um, 3D printed tanks as that, so it's just an extra added um, bonus for them as a sponsor that I'll also use the, their product in, in future videos with Bo. 3D Printing Valley are a return sponsor to the event and they have given us even more than they did last year. It's it's fantastic. There's a, a 3D printed KV1 tank plus vouchers. Mm. Weldon Tabletop Wargaming are a third party retailer based in England. Uh, he maintains a fantastic website, goes to lots of different historical shows in the south of England. Uh, he was our key sponsor last year. Isn't contributing as much this year, um, but he is still contributing to the prize pool, which I look forward to, and I'm very, very thankful that he is. A new one, Wayland yutani Terrain. Now, these guys are mostly focused on Warhammer 40,000, but they are going to send us some vouchers because they've got lots of different gaming mats and smaller mats for scenery and terrain. Uh, plus, they're that really cool um, logo from the Aliens franchise. <laughs> I love that. And then to finish up at the moment, War Games Atlantic, who are a fantastic producer of plastic kits, infantry plastic kits. Uh, you know, they've got their World War One Germans, which are extremely popular. I saw that they've just brought out um, some British box sets and their partisan box set has got like 32 miniatures in it. It's second to none if you want partisan. It is partisan. the best. I am still building mine and painting mine. Um, yeah. yeah, I am still waiting for them to come back into stock because they're sold out. They're sold out, and uh, yeah. I am. I'm still waiting for my box of German sentries because uh, I bought that box of uh, for their. It's not for bold action, but it's for another game. I can't remember what it's. It's sort of a skirmish World War Two game that oh, they. Oh, two hundred hours. Yeah, oh, two hundred hours, and yeah. uh, but the German sentries for that just they look amazing. So I bought a box of those cool. as well. Lots yeah. of character, but those yeah. are the sponsors. So at this stage. I believe everybody is going to walk away with a prize. Um, it looks really amazing. That is, that's a lot of sponsors for an it's, event. It's a lot of work, and I'm, I'm very thankful for them all. Um, they've all communicated nice and clearly. Um, I've got you know, the sponsorships piling up here at home. I really need to get rid of it. 
Um, but a final thing, and we, we've spoken about the Megatron 3000. The Megatron 3000 just makes up 50% though of the weekend that I run. Mm. I, on the Saturday is bolt action. On the Sunday is the Blood Bowl event uh, yeah. called the Megatron Mega Bowl. And each event runs in, in individually from each other. But there are players that play in both and they accumulate separate points aside from those two competitions and they are competing for the Megatron Cup. So they have got a huge weekend ahead of them. There are currently seven of them that are going to be wow. doing both, uh, wow. both bowl action and blood bowl. Uh, the blood bowl event is, uh, I think we're sitting on just short of 40 players. Um, and there's plenty of capacity in the venue uh, to have more blood bowl players come on board. So it's just that little sweetener that it might be a one day bowl action event. But if you play blood bowl as well, you can come along and enjoy uh, enjoy a, a two day long weekend event. So yeah, um, it's 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 enormous. I'm going to be exhausted, but extremely. You are going happy. to be so knackered because yeah. there's a whole lot. There's a, I've had my friend Aunt Purdy help me um, a great deal with the Blood Bowl yeah. side of things. Well, there's a whole other set of trophies, a whole other set of prize support. Yeah. You know, a whole other scoring system. But it's just brilliant. Megatron weekend, August twelfth, August thirteenth. It is going to be amazing, right? Yeah. Links will be in the description for all of this. Uh, thank you so much for coming on, Alistair. I will see you again once the Megatron 3000 is done and you have recovered just a little <laughs> enough to talk about it. So uh, exciting. Good luck to everyone going, both for the bold action bit and for the Blood Bowl tournament as well. And for those comp competing in both, you are insane, gentlemen. That's that's yeah. insanity. They are the real heroes. They are they've the real heroes. In, they've bought into my complete vision of the Megatron weekend. I love them. Good guys. Right. That was it, gentlemen. Thank you so much. And I will see you next time. Cheers. Stay safe.